lasers produce directional light energy that can be shaped and focused to a specific size, location, and power density for medical procedures, sterilization and disinfection, additive manufacturing, material processing, including cutting, welding, drilling, marking, ablating, and many other applications, like telecommunication and metrology, up to autonomous driving cars. The size and energy distribution within a laser beam is called the beam profile. The laser beam's profile defines how material responds to the applied laser beam or impacts the resolution of a metrology system. The concept of power or energy density describes the intensity from continuous wave or average power lasers or from pulsed lasers and how it is concentrated into a certain amount of space. For example, a 4,000 watt laser focused to a 100 micron diameter spot size will yield an average power density of approximately 51 megawatts per square centimeter. A 10 watt beam can create an average power density of 32 kilowatts per centimeter squared if focused to a 200 micron spot or 127 kilowatts per centimeter squared average power density if focused to a 100 micron spot. Therefore, doubling the spot size will reduce the power density to one-fourth of the original intensity. Most laser beams present a beam profile that is most intense in the center, then decreases in power density as you move away from the center. This symmetrical bell-shaped pattern is called a Gaussian distribution. Some lasers present a much less ordered profile with hot and cold spots that are asymmetrical in location. For laser cutting, the beam is precisely focused so that the shape of the focused spot and the density of the energy in that spot are perfectly symmetrical, round, and consistent. For cutting with lasers, it is also important that the beam is centered in the nozzle that provides assist gas that enables clean, debris-free surfaces. For ablating, a top hat or uniform beam profile is required. For drilling, a tightly focused beam with a Gaussian profile is preferred. For welding, a donut mode also called a Bessel or TEM01 asterisk mode, is advantageous, but with new material combinations requested to being welded, even multi-spot arrangements, like a Mickey Mouse shape, or with a square center beam, gain importance. For flow cytometry cell sorting, a very stable beam profile with symmetrical energy distribution and a proper power density is required. If the laser focuses before the work plane, the power density is reduced as the beam is expanding before impinging on the work surface. If the laser focuses beyond the work plane, the power density is also reduced. Knowing the exact location of the focused spot is essential to quality output. In most cases, the beam exiting the laser will not have the size, shape, or intensity profile needed for the application. To shape and focus the beam, optics are placed in the beam path. Laser power and beam size can change over time due to reasons mostly related to the second law of thermodynamics. Optics and mirrors gradually absorb more laser light as they degrade, causing laser power to decrease over time. Some wavelengths of light are very hard on system components. Thermal effects caused by absorption will change the size or location of the focused spot. This is known as thermal lensing, leading to focal shift. Industrial lasers which process material, for example, cutting, drilling, and welding, produce a significant amount of debris during the process. This debris can cause severe damage to the laser components closest to the process, such as the protective cover glass, beam path bellows, and even optics or mirrors. To ensure a consistent process over time, regular measurement of your laser beam's power, energy, and intensity profile is necessary to control performance. The scientist and the production technician alike need to know spatial intensity distribution, location of the focused spot, power and energy at the focused spot, quality of the beam, divergence, and the stability of each of these parameters over time. MKS Ophir instruments answer these questions. In the example shown, a laser source is measured with beam gauge and a camera before transiting through the laser delivery system. A second beam profile is measured in the middle of the laser delivery system, and finally at the laser delivery head. Notice how the beam profile changes at different locations through the delivery path. With this information, an engineer or technician can understand where to make changes to improve the quality of the laser beam's focal spot. Power and energy 
are measured by NIST traceable Ophir meters and sensors. Spatial intensity is measured by the NanoScan slip-based profiler or a beam gauge camera appropriate for the laser's wavelength, allowing industry 4.0 level of data gathering and analysis. The location of the focused spot and M squared, a measure of the quality of the laser beam, is measured by beam squared and beam watch. Additive manufacturing laser's beam size, position, and quality parameters, including focus spot size and beam caustic, is measured with BeamWatch AM, which enables real-time measurement of focal shift during laser startup, as well as the spot size and power density of the focused spot. To help you get started measuring laser beam profiles, download our beam gauge software for free. Beam gauge includes BeamMaker, a synthetic beam generator, that allows users to practice measuring laser beams and become familiar with the parameters needed to understand beam quality and characteristics. To discuss measuring your laser with a sales engineer, contact your local Ophir representative or visit us on the web at ophiropt.com slash photonics. MKS Ophir, the true measure of laser performance.